I'm Pazuz, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the worst investments in the history of skins. Given skins have spent most of the last 10 years going up in price, it is quite an achievement to actually lose money on them. And while sometimes people have just gotten genuinely unlucky, sometimes they've also been very, very stupid. And we are going to be looking at some of the worst examples in the history of the game. Let's get into things. Now, terrible investments can be a matter of perspective. For example, this is a guy called Roffle who sold a massive collection of Caddo stickers back in 2019 for a quarter of a million dollars. That might sound like a lot of money, but today those same stickers would sell for $1.8 million. Now, you could look at this as $1.5 million lost, a catastrophic fuck up on par with Don Harty selling his Bitcoin for $180, but at the end of the day, Roffle only bought the stickers for about 100 grand, and generally speaking, bad investments don't make 150% profit. But of course, not everyone can gracefully admit to cashing out too early like Roffle did. When some people do it, they proceed to have meltdowns on social media afterwards and start calling themselves a giga chad and label everyone who successfully profited off the investment an idiot, at which point you end up with much worse problems than your investment returns. But neither of these things are truly what you could call investment disasters. Investment disasters require you to actually lose money. Now, I could bring up Raz CSGO buying RMR stickers before they went on sale, but I've already bullied him a lot about this over the years, so we're going to move on to some fresher targets. Like the time Raz CSGO declared that Dust2 souvenir packages had lots of investment potential literally a few hours before Valve brought the map back into rotation. And the poor guy owns a thousand of these packages too. He really can't get a break, can he? In fairness though, he was bang on when he said it was high risk and Valve might bring the map back. And what happened to Ra twice is actually a common theme. When you invest your skins, you are relying on Valve not completely fucking you. But from time to time over the years, Valve will just completely fuck people. And sometimes they'll even fuck people by not doing something. Like when Blaine87, an OG community member, sold his Cannabis 2014 stickers because he thought Cologne 2014 stickers were going to look better. You poor man. And by the way, at the time, that was not an insane decision. People had no idea we were about to get years of shithouse tournament stickers from Valve. But increasingly, over the last few years, the community has really moved on to fucking itself. Skin prices have gone up a lot, but this has also come with a lot of volatility, and this volatility has screwed a lot of different people at a lot of different points. There's plenty of examples of this happening with random skins. A really good one is the Golden Web Foil. The Golden Web Foil is a sticker from Operation Shadow Web that had this massive investment hype, only to crash when it turned out the only people hyped about it were the investors, and quite a few of them got burnt. Today, most people wouldn't even remember this sticker exists. But in 2021, the same thing would literally happen to the entire skin economy. Basically, every high-end skin in the game would double in price over a couple of months and then crash back down about 50%. Naturally, a lot of people lost a lot of money because of this. However, it was fairly obvious things were going to end in disaster, and it doesn't seem like many people invested at the peak. Not too many, anyway. The next time something like this happened, the community wouldn't get so lucky though. But we'll get to that. Now, for the next couple of years after this crash, the skins market had a pretty good run. It's hard to lose money when skin prices won't stop going up. But that didn't stop some people. And one of those people, was this Redditor called Dimbo Limbo, who posted that he was considering investing his inheritance into Counter-Strike skins. To quote, Hey broskies, this may sound really degenerate, but I was thinking of investing a portion of my grandfather's inheritance towards CSGO skins. I was initially just going to invest it all into an S&P index fund, but my goo goo gaga brain is saying skins equal win. Am I being stupid right now, or is this not a completely bad idea? Yeah, that's right, skins equal win, the investment logic of champions. Now, the comment section, for the most part, pretty bluntly told the guy that yes, this is a bad idea and you shouldn't do it. One of them even linked him to a prophetic Wall Street bet post about a guy who blew his inheritance on the options market. But unfortunately, Dimbo Limbo's Goo Goo Gaga brain didn't listen to them. And Instead, he sunk his funds into a bunch of Antwerp and Stockholm tournament stickers. Now, this would have been a brilliant move if he'd done it six months earlier. Antwerp and Stockholm stickers had had an insane run and were sitting at record prices. But unfortunately, 
This post is from the 2nd of March 2023, and on the 5th of March 2023, Valve released the Paris stickers, which looked completely identical to the Antwerp and Stockholm stickers, and because of that, they completely tanked their value. And Dimbo Vimbo found himself posting an investment update. RIP Grandpa's Inheritance. Naturally, he also blamed the community for his mistake as well, even though he was told loud and clear not to invest in anything. And not long after this pretty unfortunate sticker debacle, something really big happened. The CS2 Limited Beta was announced, and it basically caused the entire skins market to explode in price. But this wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. In fact, there was one particular skin that went up a little bit too much, and that skin was the Black Pearls. At the height of the CS2 bubble, someone actually manipulated the price of several Black Pearls. This is pretty nuts given how inflated the market was already, but what was even more nuts was that the person who manipulated them was able to dump those Black Pearls on a YouTuber called Furious, who very quickly realized his mistake, at which point Furious became both a name and a description. According to him, they were about 60k. Today, the buff value is more like 40k. That is extremely unfortunate. The pre-release also had a couple of other pretty interesting disasters. For example, Valve accidentally changed the look of skins like the SSG Acid Fade and the Orb Sun in Leo. The new versions look considerably better than the old ones, and this led to a massive price bubble, partially because Chinese buyers were outright manipulating it with ridiculous shit like this. But this bubble quickly imploded once Valve reverted the skin back to its old mediocre look, and a lot of people were left holding the bag. But it was when CS2 fully launched that the fun really got started, mostly because the full launch of CS2 was absolutely no fun at all. People panic sold a whole bunch of skins they've been hoarding, sending the market into a complete meltdown. And best of all, before the release, people had been basically flaunting their investments on social media, something which would very quickly age very, very badly. But as the saying goes, comedy is tragedy when it happens to somebody else. And one person who suffered a horrible tragedy was a trader called Dreps, who on the 2nd of September 2023, announced that he was investing in 15 factory new houses for $100,000 for Counter-Strike 2. This investment was looking pretty good until about three seconds after Dreps bought them, at which point the prices started going down. Six days after CS2's release, Jack Lucky reported that he'd already lost $10,000 Dreps responded by defiantly stating he was holding for the long term and might buy even more. By the end of October, Dreps was reporting that he'd lost 15k, but again, he was holding long term and was seriously considering buying even more. On November 16, Jake Lucky reported that Dreps' losses were up to $25,000, to which Dreps said he was going to buy some more cases, and then, on the 1st of January, Mr. I am holding long term and I might buy even more, quick sold the house to Anomaly for a $37,500 loss. Now, to be clear, Dreps has actually done the right thing here. There is no point keeping a dud investment. Who cares if you said you're in it long term? If it's a dud, sell it and buy something better. And Dreps did. He bought Cato Hollows instead. That's the right thing to do. The downside is though that you will have to deal with an Australian wanker making fun of you on the internet. And although I haven't experienced that personally, I can't imagine it's too much fun. Now, I can't let Anomaly off the hook too easily either. He had seven Butterfly Emeralds ready for the release to CS2. Three days later, he was complaining on Twitter about how everyone was panic selling them. And worst of all, there was this dickhead down here giving him false hope about how the price might take a few months to recover. Nope, not even close, although definitely doesn't help how they look like complete shit in CS2 now. Also, somewhat hilariously, another trader called Cinco, who is unbanned now if you're wondering, congrats dude, purchased three of these knives right before CS2 came out, jokingly shouting out Anomaly for the financial advice. I think the replies speak for themselves. Now, these guys, Dreps, Anomaly, Furious, Cinco, they really just got unlucky. When you're buying and selling skins a lot, stuff like this will end up happening from time to time. But when it comes to the actual worst investor in Counter-Strike history, luck was not the problem. It was just stupidity. And who is this guy? Well, 
He's called Luna. I didn't want to make this video about this guy because he's being talked to death already, but Luna is this clown who came in, bought a bunch of stuff at inflated prices, claimed he was in it for the long term, actively tried to manipulate the price of gloves, it all blew up in his face, and he stormed out of the community after losing about half a million dollars. Basically, he did everything wrong and took the biggest investment L in the history of the game in the process. GG. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your gut. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.